Hello? Ah, perfect. Uh, so welcome back everyone. I hope you all enjoyed your lunch. Uh, we are now about to begin the final session of this conference and uh, a good one. We have four uh, presentations this afternoon. My name is MJ Sohanas. I'm from Toronto, Canada, Ryerson University and part of the program committee here. Um, to begin this afternoon, we have Osma Swominen uh, from the National Library of Finland. Um, I will leave it to you to take it away. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I am Osma, and uh, yeah, I'm talking about uh, the the uh, the topic of my presentation is from Mark Silos to Link Data Silos with a question mark, and um, this is work uh, that I did together with my colleague Nina Hyvonen. So, uh, so the starting point for uh, bibliographic data in most places is, is something like this. So everybody has a silo of uh, marked records. It could be Mark 21 or maybe a local variant. But anyway, they all have pretty much the same structure. You have bibliographic records, you have some authority records, and they are not generally available to the web. So they are sort of siloed, but they are similar inside. Um, so um, what I tried to do is to, to uh, uh, attempt to do an overview of what, what the sort of the more modern alternatives that for, for representing this data, uh, what they are. And uh, let's see if I succeed. So I wanted to do a, a sort of a family tree of, of data models, but it turns out that there's no common ancestor, so it became a more of a family forest. Uh, and I also tried to put in the same picture of all the various tools that are available for converting between these and, and, and then also some data sets and application profiles. So let's see. Uh, so the, the, the most imp uh, the, the one dimension that I wanted to look at is, is whether these models are, are basically flat or record-based, where you combine everything about the bibliographic entity into a single record or whether it splits between different kinds of entities. So, so here on this picture, the, the, the flat ones will be on the top and the, the entity-based will be on the bottom. You can guess uh, whether, which one ha has more in it. And there's also a fine line there <coughs> trying to sort of divide whether, uh, whether the models uh, have an explicit representation of works uh, as a separate thing, not. Uh, sort of outside the, the, the record or manifestation or whatever level uh, or not. Okay, and there's a legend if you, to, to make sense of the colors. So first of all, we have some flat data models. So obviously there's Mark, and uh, there's not really a good RDF re representation of Mark. There has been a few attempts, but they, um, th th it's kind of difficult. The thinking is so different. But there's mods, which is basically modeling the pretty much the same things as Mark, and there's an RDF representation of that, and there's also a conversion tool that can go from, from Mark to Mods, and then to Mods RDF, called Mark Mods to RDF. Okay, so that's the first line. Then there's Dublin Core, uh, and of course DZ terms, it's all in the same bubble, uh, which has an RDF representation, and, and there's uh, uh, Kathmandu is one of the tools that can be used to convert, for example, from Mark to DC. So uh, it can be used for other things as well, but that, that, that's the most common, I think, that well, the, all the examples are. And then there's Bibo, the bibliographic ontology, which, which is also flat, uh, a, a, quite a flat model. Um, and it's mostly oriented around scientific publishing. Okay, then there's a, a special case, which is the schema.org uh, model, which is, of course, trying to model quite a lot of everything. Uh, but including creative works and other bibliographic things. And uh, you can use it uh, either as a flat model uh, or you can use some of the bibliographic extensions to, to sort of separate out the uh, works and instances. Uh, so it, it, it's sort of in the, uh, in the middle. Okay. And then <coughs> there's the BibFrame family of data models. So on the left we have BibFrame1, uh, which is already a, a little bit old. And... Um, yeah, um, there's, um, they, it turned into sort of different variants. So there's, uh, Zephira went their own way and did their own model, which they also called BibFrame, but uh, yeah. <laughs> and then there's the link data for libraries ontology, which, which took BibFrame as a starting point, but cut out some of the bad parts and replaced them with better parts and including some parts from the schema.org. So that's also a sort of a different uh, um, data model. And, um, 
Uh, then we have um, the mark to bibframe conversion tool, which can go from mark to bibframe one, made by the Library of Congress. And then uh, Sephira made their own uh, conversion tool called PyBibFrame that can also go from Mark to their BibFrame. Then there's BibFrame 2, which came out in the spring, uh, and which is still fairly new, so no tools that I know of exist yet. Then there's the linked data for production ontology, which is again taking this time BibFrame 2 as a starting point and, and trying to tweak some things that they're not happy about. Okay, uh, then we get the Ferber family. So Ferber itself is a pretty abstract model, uh, but the, it does have an RDF representation called a Ferber core. Then there's the Ferber aligned bibliographic ontology Fabio, which is um, similar in scope to Bibo, but, but based on the Ferber model of works and expressions and um, um, manifestations. Then there's the Ferber uh, ER uh, model, which is not, um, yeah, not RDF-based, and Ferber OO, which is also not RDF-based, but then there's the uh, E-Ferber OO ontology, which is Ferber-based. So you get this sort of chain of different things building on top of others. Um, and then there's the RDA vocabulary, which is also pretty much Ferber-based, and which is, uh, it's sort of an appendix to RDA itself, which is more of a set of cataloging rules, but, but yeah, it's, it's part of the same package. So it, it can actually be used to represent bibliographic data. And then, uh, but uh, the Spanish National Library wanted to apply this when they published their uh, linked data, but instead of using it directly, they made their own ontology, sort of expanding on that. Oh, and finally, the conversion tools. <laughs> There's uh, Marimba, which is which the Spanish National Library is using to convert there, so it's sort of uh, coupled with the BNE ontology. And then there's Aliada, which also has been presented at SWIB before, which is a sort of a package for uh, converting and publishing and, and linking, uh, converting, linking, and publishing uh, bibliographic data. Um, okay. Finally, we get to the data sets. So <laughs> uh, not everything is represented here, I'm sure, but, but these are sort of the, some of the major ones. So um, among the flat data models, the, the, the Japanese uh, National Diet Library has made their own data set, which is, and they have defined their application profile mainly around Dublin Core. Uh, the British uh, National Bibliography have also defined an application profile, which is combining among other things, DC and Bibo, and they published their own data set. The, the German ones, uh, National Library, has also made an application profile combining DC, Bibo, and the RDA vocabulary and published their data set, and they used MetaFactor for the conversion. Similarly, the, the Swiss Bib that we heard about this uh, today is, is defining sort of an application profile and, 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 and putting out their data. So these are all pretty much flat models that don't represent works explicitly as far as I know. Uh, okay, then among the ones that do have works, there's WorldCat, which is available as, as uh, schema.org data, and they have WorldCat works, which is an, uh, sort of an additional layer on top. And there's the link data for libraries, uh, some of those data sets. And the, the French uh, National Library has an application profile and a data set. And this one is, uh, d does have a representation for works. And the Spanish National Library has, has a very nice one, which also sort of draws not only the works, but also the expressions as, as separate entities. Uh, there's LibHub, which I don't know much about, but they are using the BibFrame uh, Zephyr version. And then there's the, the Aliada data sets, including Artium is just one of them, but, uh, but they are, have been published uh, using these tools and the eFerber OO. Okay, so that's the big picture. Then uh, another perspective on these data models is, uh, <coughs> I'm not sure, this is a bit fuzzier, but uh, <coughs> I try, let me try. So uh, I, when I'm looking at this, I found that there is some sort of contrast between different sorts of use cases. So on the left, we have the library-ish uh, use case, which is mainly for when you want to produce or maintain your metadata as RDF. So then you need, uh, need to be sure that, for example, it's lossless, that you don't lose anything important when going from Mark into something new. 
And uh, often the, that means that you will be modeling abstractions, uh, like records and uh, authorities, instead of uh, thing, uh, like the things itself. And you need housekeeping metadata and yeah. And the web issue use case is more for publishing uh, data for others to reuse. So there you want to be interoperable with other uh, data models and you model real world objects and uh, yeah. So <clears throat> we can look at this separately for a sort of bibliographic data, I mean the things that are normally in a mark bib record and the authority data which is more about maybe uh, people, organizations, subjects. So I tried to place some of these models in, in, in this kind of setting. So on the left, we have BibFrame and mods, which are very library-ish in, in that they try to represent all the little details in a mark record uh, accurately so that you would be able to use this as a, your sort of a primary format. And uh, the, the linked data for libraries and linked data for production ontologies sort of take this a little bit in the way of uh, uh, towards webish use case by, by, for example, dropping some of the, some of the uh, awkward constructs. And then on the right side, we have, uh, um, for example, Bibo and Fabio and uh, schema.org. And then on the authority side, FOF, which is about modeling people. OK, I'm got, not going to go through all this. So this is basically what has happened, <laughs> that we have had um, a number of standards and then people come up with new use cases and they think that they should be able to cover anything and then we have more standards. Okay. So what in the end result is that everybody is building their own silos with using slightly different data models. Than, so in principle, it's good since it's all linked data, but in practice, it's very difficult to combine these because they're all different in, in various ways and not some of that, not, not all of that is maybe, yeah, makes sense from, from sort of a global perspective. Okay, so why does it have to be like this? First of all, well, different use cases require different kinds of models. Uh, another reason is that to convert from existing data is, is, is difficult, so people end up with different kind of solutions. Uh, and especially going to Ferber models is very difficult because Ferberization in general is, is difficult. BigFrame is a little bit easier. Uh, and a third reason is that libraries want to be in control of their data and their data models, and sometimes they have local requirements, which are good reasons for sort of different, making your own. And finally, once you've made something in use a specific data model, you're unlikely to change into something else. So if you want to choose a data model for a bibliographic data sets, you have to think about at least whether you want to model works, ex uh, sorry, or works expl explicitly or just flat, and then whether it's for maintaining or for publishing. Um, what can we do about this? For first of all, don't create more models. <laughs> And I think we need projects like the Link Data for Production that try to sort of consider this points of view of, of, of maintaining uh, things as, as modern entity-based models. And we would like to share and reuse each other's data. Uh, it's possible that Google or somebody else will sort of force us to use a specific uh, model in the future. Uh, if there was a compelling use case for sharing your data with, with, with a specific entity that sets the rules, then that would maybe help sort this out, but I'm not counting on this happening. Uh, finally, a few words about what we are doing with our bibliographic data. We also have trying to model this as linked open data and trying to learn from the others. So we have a <coughs> some uh, databases, we have the National Bibliography, which I'm going to concentrate on, but it's part of the Union Catalog Melinda, which is much bigger. We have an another databases for articles and, and music. And these are mo all mark based. So m my assignment basically is to put this on the web. I'm not sure how long it will take. Okay, it's not very linked uh, at the moment because uh, we have not, it's, it's pretty heavily siloed. Uh, some of it is in WorldCat, but not all, and we don't know their OCLC numbers. Uh, we're, we don't have good links between even our own records, and we're not well re re represented in VIF, for example, or not in ISNI. But our subject headings, we use YSA, but, uh, but they are linked to YSO, which is the more modern, uh, ontology version and they are linked to Library of Congress subject headings, so that's, we're good there. 
Uh, we're targeting schema.org currently because it's it's very good for uh, you can do surprisingly rich descriptions and you can as I said you can model works as a sort of a separate layer. It's not as detailed as, as BibFrame, for example, but but it you, you get the, the whole advantages of 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 a full model. You know, you, that you can model other things than just bibliographic. And it forces you to think from a user's point of view. So instead of saying we have this one million bibliographic records like we have, you, you, you think you have to put it in a different way so that we have this collection of works we, and we have these editions of those works and they're available from either from this building and then you can tell what the opening hours are and, and then you can point to the electronic versions of course when they exist. So it's, it's, it forces you to think from what, 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 what the consumer would like to see instead of just looking at your own data. And <coughs> here's some example of using, uh, of, of some data. This is um, uh, uh, the brief, uh, the illustrated edition of the brief history of time by Stephen Hawking. So um, here is the original English language work represented using uh, schema. Here is the, this, this is the finished translation of that. And, uh, this is sort of the manifestation, so the specific edition that was published in a certain year by a certain company. So, and then we have the author and translation. Um, thanks, Richard, for helping with this. Uh, <coughs> we convert it using a pipeline. Uh, this is still a draft, but it pretty much works already. Um, it's a batch process. Uh, we start with a dump from the Aleph database, one million records, uh, and we split it into smaller batches so they can be processed in parallel. And first we convert to Mark XML and do some fixes, uh, use the Library of Congress converted to convert to BibFrame, and then go from there to schema.org using Sparkle. And then we create some work keys and, um, and, um, and uh, mapping rules based on those. You, again, using Sparkle, we merge them using Sparkle and uh, consolidate everything into, into a nice, um, uh, and triple file, and then make HTT uh, out of that. Okay. Here are some challenges. Um, yeah, I'm running short of time, but uh, but we're not very far. We still have some some work to do. For example, with linking, and and we would like to publish it uh, directly from the HTT files using, uh, uh, for example, Fuseki and a link data fragment server and then to be able to provide uh, both a web interface, a REST API, a Sparkle endpoint, an LDF endpoint, for example, both for humans and machines. But it's still like early days. Hope to have something to present next year about this. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, so we have a little bit of time for some questions if uh, there's a lot to go through. So does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask about what we just saw? No? What is this uh, bots testing framework you mentioned? <laughs> Yeah, it's a, a, a framework for writing unit, unit tests in shell scripts. Um, um, it, it seems to work fine for, for this use case. So I can make sure that the conversion processes, which is pretty much based on files converted into other kinds of files and so on, so I can verify that it does what it's supposed to do and I'm not breaking For um, more fine-grained data tests to check whether something conforms with your expectation or the final result could be. I guess you could use Shaka or uh, RDF unit. That's true. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? We have time for one more question. Yes. Uh, thank you for a brilliant talk. It was really interesting. Um, I'd like to hear if you would elaborate a bit more on the schema.org um, conversion. Did you miss out any data? What, what were your um, expectations and what was the result? Yes, yeah, so the uh, conversion from BibFrame to schema is, uh, it's basically a big Sparkle query. 
I'm sort of picking out the things I'm interested in from the bib frame data, and uh, uh, it, it's it's most of the things are fairly straightforward. So uh, that that the, sort of the underlying idea of, of uh, schema.org when you want to model works is very similar to bib frame. So uh, sometimes you have to move things over from one entity to another, but it's still just one construct query. Um, I don't know how to elaborate on that without showing the code, but that's maybe not appropriate here, so <laughs> we can come back to that maybe offline if you want to see. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you for joining me again and thanking Osma. Thank you.